John, just to take you back on the, the Labour Club thing, because I have to go back But see, just what you're saying there about the community organising and, and getting together and stuff, Aye. when the Labour Club shut down, Castle lost a big, big um, place where local people went. I mean, I, I, I went there for I went there for the know, 1987. And before that, my parents went there. Oh, my pal, I've got, I've probably got 30 close friends, maybe even 50 in Cashwell, and we're all related through the Labour Club, because my parents are all there. So in terms of getting mobilised the community, getting people together, even just to socialise in a Sunday session, was, was, it was amazing. But I just, I, th I think, often I think a lot of people have said that about the club, and I think latterly it was a horrible, it was a terrible place. But I, I do think that the club certainly mobilised the community. It's where I first heard about any sort of politics, and it might have been uh, the Labour uh, Party, but um, in terms of people getting out, I just think the heart of Castle was cut out in the ship of Labour Club, as far as... I think so much in the Labour Club, we were part of me joining Eddie Graham. We discovered that we were barred from joining the Labour Party, uh -huh. just in case we decide we'd have never to done it. Uh -huh. So we, for a laugh, we were running the Labour Club to join the Labour Party, just for a laugh. And it was just, it was just, because we were in there, you know, we, you know, we were in the club several times, you could get signed in, so it wasn't that side yet. But it was quite funny because the guy was saying, we might join the Labour Party, just to wind them up, we put a lally heard about it or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy's going, no, you need to get signed in. I said, no, we don't want to join the, we don't want to join the, the club. We want to join the Labour? How do we do it? Oh no, no, you can't get in here. But you know, it was that kind of thing. Oh, you had to join the Labour Party to become a member uh, of the club. Is that the sort of reason? I joined the Labour Party. Do you know that one of the councillors away by Manson? I think it was. Well, it turned out there's a guy was wanting to get signed in the club, and he, he wanted to bring you the dog. You see, can I bring your dog in? He says, there's a dog there, and he says, well, it's Councillor Manson's. He says, well, what's the difference? He says, he's got a membership card. His dog had a membership card. He was a member of the Labour Club. It's true. I think the guy says, could your dog no sign mine? How did you shut in? It shut down. It became, a, it became well, there was, I think there was a bit of mismanagement uh, in mm -hmm. terms of monies and stuff like that. See, Labour went wonky. I think when you're talking about Labour was respected because there was no deals in the working man's mm -hmm. view. So Labour was kind of where it was, and then came along, you're talking about a different Labour Party. And it became what, John, I agree with you. I don't like Labour Party even further back than that. I think they've always been a wee bit like, no really on your side. Mm -hmm. Because they've done, they're no well, they were, workers. They were Bad against the miners, don't they? Aye, that's what I mean. Aye, even before, aye, before Thatcher, I think the Labour Party was way before Thatcher. So I, tell you, I can remember Jim uh, Callaghan. I can remember Jim Callaghan as a Prime Minister, and that's when I first realised the Labour Party and the Tories were not much different. That was my first dawning of that, you know what I mean? And then I realised the Labour was the Working Man's Party for years until New Labour and that kind of thing we were to start to do now. But that's what I think, I can see Labour having a bit of, uh, what do you call it, respect in working class areas for a long time. I think, but, it, it, oh, see, we, the, you showed there with limousines and everything. I, I remember think, that too. I think that as a community, maybe that was a, a social point or a focal point for people to collect together. But underlying that is what John was, was saying, there was a lot of corruption already going on. And actually abusing the community and doing things behind the community's back, but appeasing the community in the Labour Club. But so it was actually a uh, productive, as we all know for absolute sure now. I mean, the Labour Party is long gone and, and exposed for the shit that it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got to accept what John says. I mean, he's telling me it was a important thing in his life and a lot of other people and that's how they go to meet and talk and stuff like that so you can't eat. Uh, there's few other institutions even bad ones are good uh, communities uh, because uh, it's the only uh, thing you've got you know it's what uh, do you, can i say john would you agree though i think we've had 
as councillors go, we've had some stinkers in Castleville, you know, yeah. and they've certainly know the the interest in people. But you look, you look back at the uh, Teddy Taylor, Teddy who, and I, I remember him through the Teddy Taylor Cup, the primary school football teams played for up until mm -hmm. maybe the late eighties, I think, even when he was away. But uh, did it not transpire that Teddy Taylor was actually, obviously, he was there almost appeasing mm. cast milk residents and right. kind of fighting for them right. but he was a Trojan horse basically mm. and he was taking away the vote for the SNP at the time. But you couldn't, I, I, I've never seen any of the councillors honestly do anything useful for people and I've got no doubt you were saying about the mismanagement, I think it's true to say the Labour Club was investigated by the fraud squad. Well, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, I was, I was merely a When I described it as a gang hut, I think I was really talking about the councillors. But maybe you wouldn't even like that description. Well, well you know, I, 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 I wouldn't even know because they weren't uh, even in, they weren't uh, in your social yeah, circle. No. They, they probably sat right at the door as you went into the lounge and sat themselves. They never even sat with the rest uh, of the people who no. were actually in the club. I'll yeah. tell you something interesting. During the miners' strike, he, Eddie Duffy was one of the right. people that was involved in casting up in the miners thing. And Eddie had the idea of inviting some of the miners up to casting up and putting a night on for them in the Labour Club. Mm -hmm. And he knew that I was part, I think maybe I was part as well. But he said, that's not a problem, you know, you just won't get in that night, you know. And it was good, it was good for that, obviously. It was great to invite the miners and their wives up. As it turned out, it was a strange three night because it turned out it was a, an almighty fight in the hall that night. And I'd been into one of the other bars, because I don't really like a big kind of noisy things, right? I'd been into one of the other bars. And he, I come back out, and Carol and Larry Flanagan, one of the Labour guys at the time, one of the good Labour guys, was attending the people behind the bar that had been injured. And I've got this happened to you, and Carol says, you'll never believe it. When you went away there, this almighty fight broke out. She said it was a rugby match, it was going up and down <laughs> from one end of the room to the other. It wasn't the miners that started, it was some, something about a handbag, some woman accusing another woman about a handbag. And it resulted in this big kind of fight. And they, I'm going, oh, I wish I'd have been here. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of that night, they, here's a nice wee postscript as well. Carol said to me when we were going up to the Labour Club that night, do you behave yourself here? <laughs> and she always says that when we're going to court and things. And I say, that's how I'm fucking going to court. Because I never <laughs> behave And he, but she says, you behave yourself here. And he, she gets thrown out at the end of the night. <laughs> the one in the council. Again? Is that right? <laughs> the councillor <laughs> Walker, do you remember? This is Councillor Walker's husband. This is our husband, I. He barred me. He thought it was a minor's point. And I've gone to that, you to do you'll need to learn to be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was as prejudiced as that, John, in right. the 80s, you know. I mean, as I say, I just seen it <coughs> somewhere where, I mean, there could be 100 to 200 people all in that place, aye. in the community, if you want to <coughs> mention it, or grab people aye. together. I mean, that I played for the football team and all that kind aye. of stuff as well, so it was, it was part of me. I, I grew up with that labour club. Well, maybe, maybe I'll need a bit, be a bit more uh, targeted in my remarks. I'd be probably, I'd see, to be honest, we probably were a gang, because a group of people were <coughs> a gang, you know right. what I mean? Mm. But I, mm. I just think the heart of the community was ripped out. Mm. A big part of it when, when it shut down. Aye. Aye, I think Aye. so as well. Definitely. Yeah. I know a lot of people went to dancing, you know, they weren't politically. No, people weren't politically. You know, dancing. That was that. That's, that's probably why they'd so Cut such a big Labour Party because they're a Labour Club. That's the bottom line, you know what I mean? Everybody used to go to the Old Trolls and kind of the old days. We've had the Trolls. Because it was a dance, you know what I mean? Why would you go to the Old Trolls? Well, they had the British Legion, didn't they? People used to go there just because it was only a political question of a drink. And then with the Queen came on at the end, people would think either be fine. They used to be fine every week because I lived in Ormolish. 
what right across for you and you could time it. I think that might you know, have a lot to do with it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, know you could, you could time you it. And you would look at the windows. I don't even know when the Fairfield club is the rubber one. I've got a fight back to the moment. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. How do you reckon, because obviously like nowadays we've got loads of social media going on, so what do you think is the influence of like social media on direct action nowadays? Like do you think that adds to it and kind of gets more people involved? Or? Uh, well, you've got to make a distinction, you know, I mean there's a distinction between direct action mm. and simply demonstrating, mm. you know, a demonstration or a whatever. Mm -hmm. a, I mean, Social media should be a great tool for that sort of thing, and and it pro I think it probably is in other countries. It's been used that way, but I just can't really understand the apathy or the lethargy of people in Scotland, for example. You know, I really don't understand it, and the so social media should be a, a good tool, but it's also a danger in the sense that. See the amount of people we've cast the milk against the sterity, our Facebook page, the amount of people that like it. Yeah. You know, see if half of them came to meet us. Some keyboard activists, do you think, because keyboard activists that called them? Aye, that's been protesting. Aye, that's right. Do you think if they're mouthing up on Facebook, they've done that? Social media is quite happy, and it's timid. That's right. It's all very active. That's right. It's also so a double-edged sword. Yeah. It's also a double-edged sword. You've got to remember, not only are the left using social media, but the right are as well. I you, really? can, you can go online and watch Ukrainian fascists right. kick somebody to death That's for right. being a migrant in a forest somewhere. You can watch these people be beheaded. I don't know what That's people right, watch yeah. that for, but you can watch that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, politics goes on with social media. I think the social media is awful weak, to be honest. It's like, I'm actually put up at myself and I'm just new owner. It's like, nothing gets done but everybody talks. Mm -hmm. I, I think politics. see if people could use the positive aspects there. And also, it requires people to, to change a lot of their thinking. Not just about social media. They need to turn off that TV. You know, they need to stop watching uh, Britain's Get Talent and all these stupid shows that are on, you know. Uh, cakes, they? And take it, I mean, they're living a vicarious existence, you know. They should live here and now in their own reality and no escape into the TV or whatever. I've often thought when we were involved in the 1980s and so on, I often wondered why the Tories never just gave everybody a free television and a video, a VCR. You know, and made videos freely available to people, and that would have just killed, killed any any revolt, or, or it would have went a, a long way towards it. You know, so unfortunately, people have really got to rethink things. You know, and it's how to reach them. It's getting more and more difficult to reach them now. At one time, you could have argued that there was a working class, but an awful lot of people don't think of themselves as working class now. And an awful lot of people don't kind of qualify, you know, precarious uh, work situations and just people that don't feel that any longer. The thing is, and John, they're actually, that whole TV analogy thing, they're, they're doing that now. You can go, even if you can't afford a TV, you can go to Bright House right, and get one for the rest of your days. So uh, they've kind of that, I don't mean to say difference in ages. But I think there was a time that you knew what you could afford or what you couldn't afford. So if you were in Govan and you're with four or five brothers and sisters like me, you couldn't get Levy State Press because you're not going to buy nine pairs. But I think nowadays everybody can get. So the idea of politics based on want or need has almost carried on. It's not there anymore. Right. It's like those kids right. just get. Yeah. So, so they don't feel that. They still want to. Aye. 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 But I think, I think, I mean, when the, when the place was industrialised, you'd a lot, you'd a lot of sort of working class institutions, even if it was a labour club. Mm -hmm. it was this, you know what I mean? There was, there's no way to go to find to do this nowadays. You, know, you can do it on social media, but it's a waste. 
But then there was institutions that you could go and talk about politics, or even when there was employment, there was unions. So you went and asked an old guy what was happening. That's, well, that's what I did. That's how you learn things. Oh, right. Right. And there was always somebody about who was involved in a union, involved in this and that next thing. But I mean, with the kind of social media thing, if you can't have that personal, you know, if you can't meet in your community face to face, and nobody turns up, everybody might like, Aye. but nobody turns up. Aye. And people don't realise how important that turning up is. I learned my politics and the Labour Club and at the football. Basically, I have a guy who showed up that a wee bit older than me, 10, 15 year older than me. Aye. And it obviously Aye. Um, paints a picture. Yeah, like, oh, that mentoring stuff has disappeared. You're yeah, disappearing yeah, yeah. with it. Like the mentoring stuff has disappeared. It's also the same in the way with the, like you're saying, it's about like working, like there was like a folly through, somebody worked at a job, the, the next generation worked at the same job, it was big industrial jobs, that's Aye. changed as well, and how people interact, but the other side is social media. Is I don't buy newspapers or really watch the TV right. that much, but I do use social media Aye. and I got lots of information that yes, way. And it's kind of woke me up to plights the other people in different countries as well. So mm. I think there's a positive to that that can be used, but don't be deluded that that's action because mm. it isn't action. Action is us being here and trying to create something or a movement mm. against all the odds, but all the odds. The yeah. yes. trouble is with social media as well is nobody knows how to use it. People don't know how to use the internet. They don't know how to search. They don't know how to research. I mean, there's books this thick and search engines. You know, and, and so what you do is you press a button, you get 2,000 hits relating to what you're talking about because your search is looking for anything. Yes. And then there's little the pussy cats and then this and that. And you know, you're just total distraction. But there's actually ways of using it where you can find good material. Mm -hmm. If you can cut out the distraction, Aye. and it's all one way, and nobody uses. We have been talking about open source, and people don't even know what the open source is. You know where you can actually make the computer do what you want the computer to do, mm -hmm. rather than just take, take the you know, one way street off, Aye, off right. the internet and stuff like that. But it also takes away all the financial burden of it, and, and the, the money. Aye. Is free. No. Aye. Aye. All the stuff's free, and people could be using it, take the skips a bit. Social media is only one part of the whole struggle, yeah. isn't it, really? Yeah. I, want, I want to ask people something and see if they, what they make of this, right? As everybody knows, we're all involved in this wee group called Casamilk Against Austerity. And in Casamilk, in places like Casamilk, you can actually see the effects of austerity, right? But see when you go into the city centre, or when you go to Silverburn, or places like that, the shopping temples, Mecca. Hey, it's, I, I'm just baffled that the amount of people that seem to have any amount of money, maybe part of it, John, is they're living on the never never. Stay, you know, it's stay, 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 you know. And I think a lot of people's attitude nowadays is, I don't care. You know, I'm just going to run up. I mean, I knew somebody uh, related uh, to her family that managed to run up about 30 grand. You know, to me that's an unimaginable amount of money to run up in debt, you know. But you can't even you, 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 you really work at that, you know. Or he was able to pay it, you know, he'd got half a dozen different credit cards at the house, but ran up 30 grand worth of debt, you know. Can I just say, I've never ever had money in my life, I've never really had a credit card. My debt was my student loan and uh, council tax that they caught up and they mm -hmm. had been paid, and it all tallied up to 20 odd grand. Oh, but I, had, oh. I had nothing. I had aye, nothing. Aye. I was in that. I had any material things aye. to show for it. But that, it's like we're all caught up in that kind of. That kind of yeah. uh, you dare get yourself an education, you get debt. Mm. Mm. So. But it's like, I mean, there's, there's a guy, guy Gerber, wrote the book and debt and stuff. And he was talking about, you know, the biggest banks in America, where did they make their profits? And people think, oh, it's the arms industry, it's this and that, next thing. CDOs. And they made 80% of the money in, in the in penalties. Uh, just penalties. 
The Aye. bureaucracy makes all their money. Aye. They don't even know what it is. Nobody knows what it is. You Aye. just go in and it's like you get the form and Aye. the next thing you, you owe money. Can you imagine these Aye. billions and billions and it's Aye. all because people can't kind of fill in forms at the right time and stuff like that. But, but why are people not fighting against this? You know, this hysteria. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's what I can't get my head around. People are scared and all, yeah. Personally, people are scared. Well, they don't think... Or else unreasonably, even. They don't think they can make a difference because they just look at it, it just hits them. There's just all this massive mm -hmm. distraction. Overwhelming. Think, I can't make a difference here. That's what I mean. They I don't realise they actually can't well, make a difference. Well, does that mean that we're wasting our time then? Hmm? No, does that mean that we're wasting more time? No, what I'm, what I'm saying is, the same why people don't do it is because they've got used to it, they've got used to the debt, they've got used to this, and they don't think it'll make any difference, too big. So they don't think it can make a difference, and that's what stops them. I don't know, too busy trying to save themselves. Oh, just to, uh, to, uh, think that, uh, to think that getting together with other people. Uh, but then again, you had to be ahead with the Bring Got Talent and the East Enders and the People feel that these things are more important right, yeah. than coming to a meeting with this. Aye. <laughs> I think what I'm saying is that my story's got a sad ending. Because in the 70s, 80s, 90s, yes. I think I felt more optimistic. So did I. Things could get changed. Do you know what I mean? I just think the mobile phones and all that, you think it's uh, not uh, yet. Yeah. And there's a lot of Ill education about now. See, a lot, of, a, a lot of the debt we talk about are under 30s. We, I kind of schooled not to do that. Do you know what I mean? You were kind of told you can't afford the credit cards. And, you know what I mean? You couldn't go to a bank and get it. A bank manager wouldn't give you. But I find an awful lot of the debt. I've got a 31 year old lassie. I think she's just paid half four grand there after a couple of summers of travelling all over the world and writing a motor up, getting a new one, and getting this new motor while the old one's trying to get sold. And before you know it, she's four grand in debt, Dad. And I said, fuck hell. And then she started paying it up that year there. No oldies for a year, her and her boyfriend being quite strict and the debt is paid off. Well, I think that's just an ill education, maybe even in my part, but I dare say she's running the debt off because she's 25 at that age anyway. So I think younger people see debt as a part of the plan, whereas it wasn't for us. And I don't mean to go with the age thing. The thing is, there's millions of brilliant things going on. There's millions of brilliant things, there's millions of things young people are doing. You know, look at South America, the whole thing, and he just says, we don't want any day with the world trade. They survived the right. meltdown and all this kind of stuff. Right, yeah. the, prob the problem is most of the work we're doing is, is, is cultural change. It's never going to make institutional change because the pressure on people to stop them, you know, always, because you walk into communities, they're doing lots of really great things, mm -hmm. but it's not changing anything because it's not powerful enough to challenge the institutions that are sitting on top of us. And, and so it's how you take all this cultural stuff that's happened and concentrate it on making institute, you know, i.e. changing the banks and the people that are controlling what we're doing, you know. And I mean, there's far more going on now than what there was in our day. And there's far more awareness and all this kind of stuff. And then it was pretty violent. I mean, you think it with the 70s, 80s, stuff okay. like that. I mean, I used to go in demos in London. <coughs> it was really violent. Okay. The miners, you know what I mean? And if you went, you know, the city halls, I remember going to see that Lassie Devlin, you know, was talking about the trouble. There's people throwing fucking bricks at you and stuff like that, and you were glad the cops were there to stop you getting kicked in. You know, but you, but you can do that now, you can actually go and talk about things and have meetings and all this. So there's, there's lots of good stuff going on. It's just how we create, you know, how we put it together to create that kind of institutional change. Because the banks keep killing everything we're doing and sit and talk about what we're doing. I don't know where can, can I can I say something? I think we might be going. So, uh, but I wanted to say something in relation to this. Like I would agree with everything you said about young people, and I got myself amongst these young people that are not as active as we should be. But having said this, um, I'm sure that you're all aware of what's happening in France these days. Uh, the Meet the Boo movement. Sorry, the French, the French person now we can tell you more about it if you want to. Um, yesterday there was a meeting in George Square, uh, kind of like follow this movement up here in Glasgow. Uh, about 50 people gathered there uh, and the kind of like the, 
the aim was to sh just share ideas on what we could do to precisely sort of like fight this situation. Um, I would like to, uh, if, if you're feeling up to it, I would like to invite you to the next meeting, which is this Saturday at five o'clock in the afternoon, because it's been brilliant listening to your fights and your struggles. And I think that group of people that will be there, uh, I will try to be there myself, would benefit a lot from just listening to your experiences and you sharing with them your strategies because I think the whole intergenerational thing is very important and if you can like pass this knowledge to people that they gather there and they want to do something but they don't really know what to do or how to do it. So it would be brilliant if you could show up. It's in George Square Saturday at five o'clock in the afternoon. If you can just show up and it's open, people can just talk, share their ideas share what they want to do, and I think it would be great if you, if you could do that. I think that'd be good. We could go there and play the Could that just say something on direct action? I think it's quite important, and it's, it's more for the young people if you've not been involved in direct action. You've heard about 40 plus years of activity there, and you've heard stories that have been told time and time again. And as is inevitable with stories that uh, get told time and time again, they kind of they kind of get levelled out somewhat, and you know yeah. And then they called the police, and the police said you're all under arrest, and they went okay, arrest us all. Don't be under any illusion. Every time you go out as an activist and you're facing arrest, you're standing at home that morning brushing your teeth, going, "Good God, I hope I don't get arrested." I hope I'm coming home in time for tea tonight. You go into things, you're standing at demos, you see the cops appear, and you think, oh no. But then you've got to put on that face of, I can handle this. I know why I'm here, and I'm going to be strong. But fear is always there. Be under no illusion. And try and just, whenever you confront these situations, not let your fear overcome you. And remember, as my dad said about the policeman trembling, when he was getting taken away, it's all about front. They've got front. They might have power, they might have weapons, but it's also front. They can only do what they do as long as you believe in their ability to do that. But that works the other way. You've got to believe in your ability to do what you can do and believe in everybody that's round about you. And there's more of us than there is of them. Yes. <laughs> and we've got more to gain out of it. I mean, I've been enough this time. I've been I certainly want to say something and just going to kind of fear thing. Could you not um, come closer? The time at the uh, Turnbull Street when, you know, they were going to stop the warrant sale, um, the gates opened and everybody charged in. I charged in with them and then I ran back out again because I was terrified. And then I thought to myself, no, this is me right. You know, so I think part of the fact I've got to go home and say to John, I ran away, you know. <laughs> so I actually went back in and I must admit, you know, then you realised the courage of your convictions because you realised it was all wrong, what was happening in there, that people's, you know, the furniture was getting taken away. And um, that's what kept me going, that's what made me go back in. You know, but my legs were shaking and my hands were shaking and everything, but I did it. Thanks very much for coming, folks. Thank you, John. Thank you. I will share the event on your web page, on your Facebook event, then you can see. Thank you.